Hello YouTube. Okay. Yes, we're going to discuss the uh, Community Civil Emergency Plan. This is the overall. And I'm just going to do a reading this time. Okay, here we go. A call to action. Uh, preface. Everyone, stock up now. Minimum three months of everything you need. Food, gas, radio, flashlights, batteries, ammo, firewood, propane, fuel oil, meds, first aid, water filters, extra clothing, blankets. I su suggest a year's supply minimum. And everything you need. Uh, not only for yourself, but for your loved ones too. And then have them also make up their way their own survival kits uh, for themselves but you go ahead and make it up for them also because chances are they many of your friends and family won't do it themselves okay let's see there's a okay I'll do some history here to justify all this in 2016 we the people uh, Duly elected Donald J. Trump for POTUS. Uh, globalist forces conspired to fraud the U.S. 2020 election, um, as evidenced in investigations and trials. And I've got links. The globalists have again combined forces to fraud the U.S. 2024 election. Um, I hope we make it there. Let's see. I'm skipping a bunch of links. They've even tried to assassinate Trump multiple times, which is evidence that they won't stop with his death. Um, let's see. Anyway, they want to collapse America into horrors unimaginable, even plunging the world into a global nuclear holocaust. Uh, this cabal is violently and criminally insane. Let's see. Only the spirit of peace is blessing. Only by the spirit of peace and blessing will America escape from being hurled into full violence, as we almost did on 13 July 24, and again 15 September 24, and other times since then. Let's see. Uh, terrors are postponed but not avoided. Okay, since they will not stop trying to kill presidential candidates, and you and I also, we're faced with imminent and likely violent widespread of physical conflict against both our neighborhood criminals and the criminals infesting our sacred public offices. The SIGI Council and Senior Executive Services may try to assassinate both Kamala and Trump, for without an elected POTUS, they can by default run the White House, um, basically by executive council dismiss, dismissing both SCOTUS and Congress, which they've already discussed that. Anyway, this is this is a plan. Um, don't say it won't happen. Okay, the executive committee can then impose an administrative dictatorship over these USA, and their plan is for this to become the second committee of the CCP, which they already declared such for the first few weeks after uh, Biden, it, you know, was inaugurated, but uh, and then they chilled. Okay, recent developments: Democrats in high office now openly state this is not just Democrats; it's rhinos, it's uh, globalists. I should have put globalists. Okay, they want many things that terrorize the unknowing public, including a nationwide power blackout of more than three weeks duration and that more than three weeks is a critical time. Uh, the purpose to purge America of deplorables. Okay, this sounds like they're announcing a Bolshevik style revolution and uh, an SDS, that's uh, Students for Democratic Society, you know, from the 70s and stuff. And uh, uh, Solinsky, I forget his first name, uh, basically their wet dream for a genocide of patriotic Americans. On these grounds, I deeply urge that every community must enact a local continuity of, of community plan or a civil, you know, a civil emergency uh, plan uh, as defense against exploitation by criminal political infiltrators, militarized cartel assets, saboteurs, foreign assets, or UN military occupiers. Okay, our duty 
preserve our community in order to prevent America's collapse. We save America by saving our communities. This emergency plan gives communities an enhanced likelihood of surviving long-term civil trauma. In case of civil unrest, riots, chronic loss of internet or power, um, following this emergency plan will also save your family and loved ones. You're badly needed, you are badly needed to ready your community and apply this plan locally. It might already be too late, but we still might have another week or two. So we need everybody to get on this quickly. Okay, because many administrators, uh, local administrators often don't care much for the members of their community because they're, they're caught up in, in petty squabbles locally, you know, like, uh, f you know, little feuds between families and, and arguments and whatever. So they're, they're distracted from, you know, from fulfilling their primary duties to the community. Okay, so if they get in the way or slow down or ignore you or something, you need to just go right past them, go straight to the community, start your own neighborhood watches, um, approach the, uh, the fire chief, uh, um, you know, the police chief, the, uh, uh, you know, head of EMS, the, uh, you know, different administrators uh, in your community and have them ready to implement their part of this emergency plan, even if city council or the uh, chamber of commerce uh, doesn't get on board with it. Because I'll tell you, once this stuff starts getting intense, they will jump on board and they'll be happy that somebody was, uh, was ahead of them. Okay. Uh, I've got a, a wind and uh, got to make sure that I'm reading everything. Okay. Okay, I covered that. So here we go. This is the solution. The Community Civil Emergency Plan, or it might be better called the Municipal Civil Emergency Plan. Um, Okay, now the scope is activate this plan in defense of community interests during an ongoing communications, internet blackout, electrical power blackout, a major supply chain shortage. Now we know that we've got that looming starting as of the, the instant this film's being made, it starts tomorrow. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a nationwide siege on our docks because it's mostly the eastern seaboard, uh, Atlantic and Gulf, but uh, I've gotten reports that the uh, if they divert ships to the western shore, the uh, the shoremen along the western coast will refuse to offload these ships that have diverted. Okay. Anyway, uh, it's another example of uh, of unions. Uh, having a pretext of, of furthering a socialist agenda. They could have they could have chosen a better time other than just before the elections. And they could have, uh, whatever, okay, I don't want to get sidetracked. I want to just read this. Okay, yeah, so supply chain shortage, sabotage, blockade, riots, marauders, mass migration, national or local civil emergency. Okay, justification. State, county, civil emergency plans fail to address non-natural disasters. I've read the Oregon uh, state emergency, at least parts of it. Uh, the, uh, the county, my local county emergency plans and what little bit our, uh, you know, the local community here had. And none of them addressed civil emergencies. They were all like natural disasters, you know, like a freezing rain, earthquake, fires uh you know like there was a, a tsunami or something because the earthquake got earthquake off the coast that kind of things but uh nothing like uh, economic collapse uh you know supply chain collapse uh, any, uh, that kind of stuff or even nuclear war <laughs> uh, okay let's see okay now so the justification uh yeah, that's it, is uh, these needs are not addressed, so we need to get our community to address them. Okay, also, law enforcement, military, treasonous administrators, United Nations, all 
recruit criminals that will detain lawful citizens in blatant violation of, of our natural rights. Um, matter of fact, the wording, uh, the Armed Forces Recruitment here says you must be a U.S. citizen. Okay, well now that's, that's, that's sort of okay. Or resident alien. That's the thing is uh, with a high school diploma. Resident alien. Okay, now if you're someone that's been recruited out of a foreign prison by the State Department, been brought here, given a little financial card, and been given a cell phone, and you don't have documentation, but you go down to the Motor Vehicles Division and they they just give you a driver's license and register you to vote, things like that. In some states, some states, they don't even uh, ask the uh, the illegals to take driving tests they don't even need to know how to read and then they go down they get I am chasing rabbits again okay I need to get this thing read um, okay so anyway that's why we need this plan so that we can uh, locally way we can determine our own destiny without people from the outside that don't have any interest in in our well-being uh, dictating to us you know how we'll conduct ourselves Okay, and whether we'll survive or not. Okay, so we need to uh, establish our local civil emergency plans that primarily respect local community members' rights and needs, inspired cooperation uh, between, you know, uh, neighbors and communities and, and the municipality and businesses and, and local industry, things like that, and uh, get voluntary regimentation, you know, get volunteers to create emergency, you know, emergency uh, action teams. Because you're, there's a, a lot of extra things that are going to need to occur during this emergency. Um, and I'll try not to chase rabbits because this will touch on a lot of those. Okay, the, uh, the civil managed survival of all is possible. Um, affecting a, a, a prompt recovery and then dismissal of the emergency event event as soon as possible um, now the process if if uh, if power is up but internet itself just internet goes down um, you might have 24 or up to 48 hours before this starts dropping the power because our utilities are dependent upon the internet for example, uh, electrical power. The uh, the without the internet, the uh, power stations, coal-fired power plants, cannot have coal deliveries from the trains. Um, the ones that are natural gas fired, the uh, the valves are have timers on them, so if they don't receive any signals, they'll automatically close. That's the safety feature. Uh, anyway, th those are examples. Uh, the hydropower plants, uh, they have to monitor, constantly monitor the lake level and the, the power levels and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, control the specs of the hydropower plant. And most of these, they don't even have people inside. And if they are, it's just a minimum crew or something. But anyway, so uh, without internet, if any of those goes foul, we'll start having brownouts and eventually it'll collapse to blackouts. Okay, so uh, internet internet blackout. You pull the emergency plan out, slap it on the table. Two hours later, if the internet's still out, then you make a phone call to uh, activate the uh, the uh, uh, you know your community um, you know emergency you know command center. And then you also make a phone call to the uh, schools uh, to be ready, you know, ready to, uh, well, yeah, if, if the Internet's out, the schools can finish their classes. You know, they just, just take the students home at the end of the day. And if Internet's not back up by the next day, just leave the students home because it's better that the students stay with their families in case, uh, you know, something goes on. Anyway, something... Uh, you know, power goes out. Okay, uh, keep businesses open and safe as long as possible. But with the internet out, but utilities are, I mean, electrical power is still up, then you have time to pre-place resources like generators and fuel and, you know, oil and, and, and whatnot. Uh, contact your 
I'm getting out of sequence here. Okay, keep businesses open and safe. Postpone business bank deposits because businesses might need that cash. So in the bank deposit, they can just leave themselves an IOU along with their daily ledger. Uh, but don't just let your deposits pile up inside the bank because they can't do anything without the internet coming up. Um, uh, activate uh, the residents into civil emergency teams. That'll happen. Um, eventually prevent schools being seized by FEMA or Homeland Security and you close them before the second day of the internet blackout or within two hours of electrical blackout. Okay, prepare for the power outage. Use your uh, internet out time to prepare for electrical power out. Um, position generators for, like your city water, you gotta keep those city water tanks full. You gotta keep the uh, sewage pumps running because you don't want sewage backing up and coming out of people's showers and bathtubs and stuff. Um, and then the waste treatment plants also, because you, yeah, you don't want your sewer backing up and, or dump, ending up dumping in a local creek or river or something. You don't want that. Okay, if uh, you start getting brownouts, another thing you do is uh, you, uh, you'll have the neighborhood watches activated. And the uh, neighborhood watch representatives go around to each of the house and have people, you know, turn off the breakers to their hot water heaters and set the uh, like baseboard heaters and stuff to the uh, survival extremes, you know, for minimum use of power. That way it, it minimizes the effect of the brownout and you keep power up a little bit longer. Um, you know, while you're preparing for the power to completely go out. Okay, uh, if uh, brownout, yeah, I already covered that. Now, once the power does go out, that's when you activate the uh, city's emergency communication center. And then, of course, it establishes radio contact with Homeland Security, well, not Homeland Security, but, but you uh, with the uh, neighborhood watch representatives, with the uh, public works, with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, fire chief, um, uh, EMS, and, you know, all that stuff. Chances are all of those things will still, you know, it will already be established, but they'll just need to confirm that communications are up so they don't have to scramble. Okay, um, keep city water sewer functioning, generators for water pumps. Okay, I already sort of touched on all these. In other words, everything that is critical use, like uh, clinics, uh, hospitals, um, and you got to keep your businesses going. You can't let all their food spoil and stuff. Um, of course, they'll be cash only, but you need to keep the businesses going and then you, okay, I, I touch on a lot of that stuff. You need to have uh, uh, fuel supplies, you know, like uh, certain gas stations are de designated for, uh, for police. You'll have uh, emergency teams like Rangers and Public Works and things like that, uh, EMS. And then you'll have uh, gas stations only for local businesses to use, you know, like contractors and, and things like that. And then you can designate gas stations also specifically for public use only because, um, well, because the public will still need to have fuel and things. Um, you bullhorn neighborhoods uh, to save, you know, to uh, save non-perishables for later. In other words, uh, if you're going to eat something, eat the perishables first and uh, start, uh, if you don't eat them, then start, uh, you know, start uh, preserving them and everything. There's different ways of preserving meat and everything. Um, I'm, I'm not sure certain of them, and I don't have time to look it up right now. Um, and then have all your neighborhoods select their neighborhood watch representative, and then uh, tell them they've got an upcoming town hall, and have, the, have each neighborhood, uh, have a neighborhood watch representative attend that town hall. And then everybody basically have a quick discussion with their representative uh, to cover details of, of, of needs and things that need attention in the neighborhood so that the uh, neighborhood watch representative can go to the town hall and it can be a two-way conversation there amongst everybody. Okay, and then, you know, like the next day, next morning, you convene your town hall and it might be four or six hours or something. Um, okay, but anyway, yeah, so you, uh, 
you need to uh, best coordinate, manage issues, events, hardships, give feedback, suggestions, etc. Um, you can't you can't just come out like a dictator. You've got to listen to ideas and everything, and and come up with the best plan, and be willing to modify those plans. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a little bit before they're implemented or something, or even modify as needed. Okay, have your emergency response personnel uh, put in charge of different emergency response teams like uh, like the Rangers. Um, that'll be a group that's kind of like, uh, I guess, roustabouts or gophers. They'll work amongst, you know, between a bunch of the other teams, like your neighborhood watch representatives, um, between your, your, uh, your business community representatives, uh, between the public works, and then uh, between representatives of, of major industry and contractors, and uh, uh, there'll be other groups, other groups. Um, but the Rangers, they'll be kind of like a, a ready, a ready uh, labor force that's ready to respond or help uh, coordinate, you know, uh, I guess interactions between the other groups and things. Or, and they'll also be on call from the uh, emergency command center and in constant contact with the uh, emergency communication center, etc. cetera. Uh, they'll also go around and recharge batteries, I mean, recharge radios and things like that, uh, to, you know, all the other groups and stuff. Uh, in other words, each community will find things for the rangers to do, and there'll also be uh, auxiliaries for like EMS, for fire, for, uh, you know, other things okay uh, you also need to uh, confirm uh, you know the security uh, of all kinds of things like um, you know your your city water sewer treatment generators uh, businesses watch over infrastructure bridges dams railroads substations power and pipelines um, yeah all that stuff need to just assure that it's all they're all in good shape uh, your neighborhood reps uh, can recruit uh, uh, members from the neighborhood to man these uh, you know emergency response teams okay uh, police can monitor travelers in and out of town uh, make sure that looters marauders saboteurs and stuff like that aren't trying to come into your town and things like that um, Rangers uh, can uh, recruit local businesses and industries for for certain resources, you know, to uh, fulfill ne necessary projects that the municipality will need, things like that. Okay, here's a timeline for an example. Uh, if just an internet only, you've got power up in this scenario. Uh, internet out, zero hours. You table the uh, civil emergency plan. Two hours. You activate the the civil emergency uh, plan, uh, especially before dusk or dawn. Um, internet hours plus four hours, you activate the communication fusion center or yeah, the emergency communication center, whatever. And then you suspend school operations. Um, internet out. Plus six hours, you activate the community response teams, EMS police, public works, local specialists, uh, you know, to basically to dispatch, oversee, and intercede between uh, teams that they supervise, you know, the, the specialized teams that they'll supervise. The, you know, they'll build teams under them. Um, and then uh, internet out, plus eight hours, you'll activate, activate specialized teams as community auxiliaries, community watch, patrols, rangers, minimize break-ins, burglaries, assaults to homes, businesses, pharmacies, gas stations, etc. Internet out plus 12 hours. Activate rangers to observe and report status of, of refugee traffic, community access, critical infrastructure, you know, like water, sewer, dams, bridges, power lines, uh, railroads, etc. Um, gas lines, whatever. Internet out plus 16 hours. Encourage neighborhoods to select their neighborhood representatives to attend a town hall. Internet out plus 24 hours. You assemble your neighborhood reps and uh, representatives from, from your business community, your industry community, etc., all into the town hall to uh, 
basically identify community needs. And then there you, you uh, brainstorm and you basically find means to best tend to everybody's most critical needs. And uh, then have the uh, neighborhood watch representatives recruit neighbors to help with special needs persons. Um, and then they can also recruit you know, volunteers to be rangers and community auxiliaries. I already touched on that. Internet out plus 28 hours. Affirm vital communications with neighboring communities. Uh, hopefully your neighboring communities uh, will have uh, their own, uh, you know, emergency uh, uh, command center and emergency communication center and things like that. Um, to confirm, you know, secure protocol for you're going to need to keep the supply chain going. So you're, that means you're going to have to have security details on, on the semi trucks and, and uh, railroads and things like that so on the, going down the tracks uh, to keep, uh, you know, marauders, you know, from interfering with, uh, you know, safe delivery of, of goods. Okay, Internet out plus 32 hours. You assemble neighborhood response teams to best manage and resolve local neighborhood issues and coordinate with... Uh, uh, with uh, community response teams as needed. Internet out plus 36 hours. Your pre-positioned generators, you know, for, uh, you know, for your communication center, your command center, for waterworks, clinics, major businesses, other center. Uh, a lot of these seem like repeats because I'm going over the same process from multiple perspectives here. Pre-post your neighborhoods for extended loss of utilities. Um, so that means you might have to um, come up with different accommodations for special needs residents and things like that. You turn off breakers, dot water heaters, uh, baseboard heat, air conditioners, turn off street lights, um, encourage minimum or only essential use of petrol products, establish uh, which fuel stations are used for what purposes. We went over that. Internet out plus 40 hours. Affirm two way radios are with each civil emergency element. Public Works, uh, neighborhood, rep, rep, uh, neighborhood Watch Representatives, um, uh, Rangers, uh, and make sure your gas stations, businesses, uh, industries, warehouses, things like that have radios too. Okay, Internet out plus 44 hours. Have the major Rangers start doing, uh, you know, security patrols and things. Uh, monitor major roads, bridges from neighboring towns, confirm security of waterworks. All of these, uh, all of these important things, you know, you've got going on in your community. Affirm security support and cooperation with local farm uh, co-ops and petroleum suppliers, uh, delivery companies, warehouses, etc. Um, so, if you can establish communications with, uh, uh, you know, next neighborhoods, uh, you know, communication centers, then you can start uh, exchanging communications with them go through them and then have them communicate with local businesses in other words like if you have a have an order um, you can start transacting on on credit that's already established before the emergency you can start making transactions and uh, each community is going to have to have its own form of emergency credit union set up to you know to keep records of uh, credit versus debt and everything um, that's so that we can have as many people survive as long as possible um, okay I'll, I'll touch on that later I'm jump, I'm jumping ahead of myself again okay solicit preparations for limited community uh, backup power options and other resources like uh, uh, you know like uh, logging communities the uh, the sawmills for example and, and lumber mills and plywood mills whatever a lot of them will have uh, uh, steam powered uh, electrical plants and if there's no utilities available to the town then they can have the local utility people rewire do whatever is necessary so that uh, their steam generators can back feed some of that power into the heart you know of the town to help maybe keep uh, local businesses keep their their freezers going keep the uh, emergency the command center and uh, emergency communications up and like the water and sewer and stuff like that these necessary things quality of life issues uh, going so that everybody doesn't start 
going into a pandemic and dying of cholera and you know diseases for lack of hygiene um, the whole idea is to get everybody to survive as long as possible um, they've got to survive you know the first three days the first three weeks the first three months and then the first year um, if we can survive the first year uh, then the idea is we're in a good position to start rebuilding um, in other words, uh, you know, like if it's a nationwide outlet, for example, if it's an EMP or something like that, we're going to have to follow this process anyway. But there's other things that can happen, and like a nuclear war, or, yeah, whatever. I don't even want to go into that stuff. But anyway, so this plan's important. It needs to be followed. Uh... Okay, internet out plus 48 hours. Go around and double check that all your generators and fuel and oil and everything like that's ready to ready to come online. Uh, if uh, utilities go out okay do drills and training if it if your internet is out at 48 hours and your power is still up then you need to quickly do some do some drilling and training because uh, you're gonna have a whole bunch of Rangers you're gonna have a whole bunch of supplemental teams that uh, if your internet is not up within 48 hours then there's a good chance everything's going down so you need everybody needs to hastily you know, as, as, as quick as possible, learn as many skills that they're going to need um, to apply once once the power does go down. And so at Internet Out plus 48 hours, that's when your training and everything, it, it, it absolutely has to start. Okay. Now you might occasionally have to, uh, you know, repower residences and stuff like that uh, for special needs, uh, some, you know, a little bit of hygiene or something. But the thing is, is you need to make sure that the hot water heaters stay full of water, um, that everybody has plenty of water on hand. So when the power goes out, um, they'll have as much, you know, water on hand as possible. But if everybody has plenty of water, then that'll buy time for people to figure out how to like come up with a gravity feed system, a, uh, uh, a makeshift uh, a water filtration system, and then so they can uh, basically get get water filtered to gravity feed into the uh, city water system and then um, when it gets to the point where they can no longer pump sewage unfortunately you're gonna have to start abandoning abandoning houses and things because uh, you want to keep people healthy anyway these things uh, those are specific issues that the local people have to manage okay uh, so basically yeah, you seek solutions for foreseeable issues. Um, you also coordinate with neighboring towns for essential trade and exchange of critical information. And that's where you need to have your your supply chain security details already system already worked out also. Um, you need to maintain, of course, needed confidences for security, you know, of the community and, and other elements. And that's not hiding information from the public, but that is limiting information uh, for the sake of, uh, you know, more reliable supply chain um, and things like that. Um, and unfortunately, we are really in a situation in America where um, it's an incredibly high likelihood that we're going to have saboteurs trying to destroy any infrastructure that we're able to uh, keep going and everything. And we're going to have to deal with that. That'll that'll be a, a, a serious a, a serious threat. And anyway, okay, there it is. And don't let it get it ca get you caught by surprise because it's better to catch them before they destroy things than than have to deal with it later. Okay. Next phase here. What to do if you got a uh, a utility a total electrical power blackout? Okay, within two to four days of, of electrical blackout, uh, you can expect mass confusion. Uh, huge crime waves will begin. And day three, businesses start getting looted by crowds. And uh, America is not a third world, uh, third world country, but you do have areas in America with a lot of people from third world cultures. Now, third world cultures, on three days of, of civil distress, they start resorting to cannibalism. 
uh, that's on power blackout plus four days revenge killings begin now this is this is in a third in, in first world countries power blackout plus four days then revenge killings begin power blackout at five days you start to have ro roving gangs looting neighborhoods one week armed security zones become very common so if you're if you're not pre-positioned by then it's going to be impossible for you to go anywhere or at least almost impossible and if you continue if you persist in trying to travel you're probably going to end up dead okay so power blackout plus two weeks in first world cultures at two weeks generally day 14 or 15 cannibalism starts that's in first world countries that suffer catastrophic utility fa anyway, failure in their in their communities now this is also in large towns Okay, power blackout plus three weeks. You get armed gangs of cannibals. They're doing sweeps to supply their butcher houses with flesh. At one month, drug lords become warlords. And of course, they, they do extensive raiding of rural areas and farms and stuff for resources. Power blackout plus three months. You've got foreign armies and agencies, NGOs and things like that, established bases scattered about, often near communities. Okay, power blackout plus six months. Foreign administration is imposed. What they have planned for America is... Uh, of course, they want Chinese administration across the Pacific states. Um, for 30 years, they were wanting to allow Russia to administer the, uh, the plain states, the upper plain states. And then uh, a group of, uh, you know, Central American company uh, countries to administer the uh, southern plain states. And then they were going to have a, a consortium of third world countries, you know, like African and Middle Eastern and stuff like that, administer the East Coast. I, I mean, the, uh, you know, east of the Mississippi. So um, what's what will happen after these administrations are imposed? You're going to have a power blackout plus nine months. You're going to have carpetbaggers. They're going to start running sanitized operations, seizing all land. Uh, removing anyone who claims, you know, ha has a claim to the land. And then, of course, they're going to be wanting to do little, uh, uh, you know, enterprises on the side. So they may keep some women or children for themselves or to sale. Um, and then any surviving cities, you know, after nine months, then these surviving cities are invaded or put under siege. Uh, they're warred against. So the idea is we need to have as many people survive as long as possible so that we can repel this uh, foreign administration's trying to be imposed upon us. And then once we've repelled them, then we can rebuild. You know, we can uh, basically reconstruct our constitutional republic and then rebuild society. Only this time we do it in a way so in theory we've got a thousand years of peace, but we can't we can't build it upon warfare. It's got to be lawful, legal, due process. It's got to be peaceful. Now, if you're dealing with uh, if you're dealing with people that are violent, then you know it's our duty to subdue the beasts. If they want to live under the law of beasts, then we have to we have to deal with them that way. Um, but we have to do it in a civil way so that we preserve our civility. Because if we abandon civility, then ourselves, we become, we become insane and we're not fit for any kind of a future civil society ourselves. And that's actually one of the reasons why a lot of military veterans that have to uh, serve in, in other cultures, that's one of the reasons that drives them to suicide is because they just cannot uh, come to terms with them having to shoot, uh, shoot women and children sometimes because we're raised in a culture where 
you know, you, you, you don't violate innocence, you know, women, children, villages, you don't, you don't violate innocent people, you know, with violence of warfare. Um, but if they've been weaponized, then we have to deal with them appropriately. But anyway, okay, I want to get on with that. Um, so, generally, we want to prevent the fates of, if everybody tries to bug out on their own and everything, uh, generally within the first three months, 60% of the members of a community become casualties. You have a little bit better chance of surviving if you bug out. But you have much less capability of dealing with hazards that you encounter, you know, in your bug out situation. So all of our history has proven that your chances of survival, you know, survivability goes up exponentially if you have a community that you can be part of. Okay, so 60% casually in the first 30, uh, you know, first three months. And uh, generally it's 90% casualties in the first year. We've got to avoid that stuff. Okay, so if we can work together, you know, put this emergency plan into place, work together, then hopefully we can have over 80% of our community's, you know, members still surviving at the end of that first three months. And then hopefully by the end of the first year, we can, st we can still have 70% of the community survive. And then if we have 70% of the community still around to help us to rebuild and everything, the, and they have their mental facilities, they're, they're not driven mad by, by the inhumane acts that they've had to do, go through, um, then we can, we can rebuild a, a wonderful, peaceful society. Okay, I think I've made my point here, so I'm going to skip reading that stuff. Um, but anyway, that's the basics of the emergency plan. I tried getting through it in the last video, but I'm also thinking this video itself is also too long. So I may actually have to break this up into narrower topics and shorter videos. Because I don't like to belabor everybody having to watch a really long video when they have important things in life to get on with. Okay, God bless everybody, and my email again, if you want a copy of this yourself, um, you might be able to capture it from the, uh, from the text, you know, the, the voice capture text, you know, at the bottom of this, and sort of come up with one yourself, or it'll be better if you just, I don't have a, a download site, otherwise I'd put that up there, but just uh, email rebelforgod at hotmail.com that is r-e-b-e-l f-o-r g-o-d no spaces no underscores uh, it's all small characters uh single word at hotmail.com rebelforgod at hotmail.com and i'll go ahead and email you back this and stuff so uh okay god bless everybody and uh yeah okay have at it